Welcome back to Precious Blood Renewal Center for this third Easter meditation. As I am recording these here in Liberty, yesterday the mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, issued an additional three weeks of stay at home order in addition to or beyond the date that already was established. Something similar probably is happening in your neighborhood too. So during this time, it's all the more important to stay close to Jesus. And hopefully these meditations are helping you to root yourself more deeply in a relationship with Jesus. In today's meditation, we will join the apostles after they have gone back to fishing on the Sea of Galilee after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus appears to them on the seashore. At first, they do not recognize Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is not the same as the resuscitation of Lazarus after his death or the resuscitation of Jairus's daughter after her death. It's the same Jesus, but there is something new, something different about the resurrected Jesus. After his resuscitation to life, Lazarus went back to his previous work and his previous relationships with his sisters and neighbors, only to die again at some point. Not so with Jesus. In a parallel way, God doesn't want you to go back to your old style of prayer that you had before Lent began this year. God wants to share something new with you. Once again, re we remember that through these meditations, we want to go deeper in our encounter with the risen Jesus, deeper than we have before. Remember that we are created to spiritually go deep sea diving. Again, I invite you to enter into this contemplative prayer by sitting up straight in your chair, relax, let go of any distractions, any tensions, anything on your to-do list for today. Take a few deep breaths. Breathe in the new life of spring and Easter. And breathe out any negative thoughts, any distractions, any anxieties. <clears throat> Let's begin our prayer by signing ourselves with the cross that won our salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to enter into this prayer by prayerfully singing along or simply listening. There is a longing in our hearts for you. O oh Lord, to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. There is a longing in our hearts for you, O oh Lord, to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. There is a longing in our hearts for you, O Lord, to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. As I read from the Gospel according to John, from, verse, from chapter 21, verse 20, verses 2 through 14, I invite you to close your eyes and visualize the action in your mind's eye. Together with Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, 
Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. Jesus, they said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was nearly dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from the shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though they were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. I invite you to continue with your eyes closed and to enter into this prayer. You are one of the disciples in the boat fishing all night and catching nothing. Peter is depressed. He liked to think of himself as an ace fisherman. Had he lost his skill? When a stranger on the shore tells us to throw the net over the right side of the boat, Peter asks, who does he think he is? The rest of us convince Peter that it can't hurt to try. We've got nothing to lose. When the net fills with fish to overflowing, Peter's face lights up with joy, as do the rest of ours. It was a miracle. When John thinks that he recognizes the stranger as Jesus, you think to yourself, it could be. It's just like Jesus to do a miracle like this. When we get ashore, the stranger doesn't look like the old Jesus we knew, so you are not so sure. But his kindness and his concern about satisfying our hunger is just like Jesus. He has started a fire with a few fish baking on it, but asks us to join the fruit of our labor along with his to make a meal. He has provided the bread himself. When he distributes the warmed bread, there's something about his gestures, his manner, that reminds you of his actions at the Last Supper. You know now for sure that it is Jesus. Wow. It is so good to have him back in our company. As we eat together, we are companions again, breaking bread together. Jesus was always a great teacher to listen to, but there was always something special about sharing a meal with him. 
and so it is now. The sun rising and reflecting off the sea adds a special feeling. There are beautiful shades of red and orange in the sky. Jesus is joking with us, makes us feel very relaxed with him. He teases Peter about being an ace fisherman. Peter takes it in good stride, accepting it as a sign of affection. Jesus obviously enjoys being with us and we with him. Listening to Jesus, listening to the waves lap up on the shore, watching the birds fly in the sunlight and having a full stomach, it's all very refreshing. We are companions on the journey of life. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life. And in the love we bear is the hope we share, for we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. No longer strangers to each other, no longer strangers in God's house. We are fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care, by the strength of those who care. We have been gifted with each other, and we are called by the word of the Lord to act with justice, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with our God, to walk humbly with our God. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life, and in the love we bear is the hope we share, for we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. Continue to sit in silence for a few moments, enjoying the company of Jesus. Then, when you are ready to end this meditation, Trace the sign of the cross over your body. Please join us again next Tuesday for another Easter meditation.